Hey everyone, so we have big news. It has been confirmed by the IDF that Hassan Nasrallah, arch terrorist and killer of many people for, for a generation, has been eliminated by the IDF. And uh, this is this is news that is, uh, for the world, it's wonderful news in the sense that uh, terrorists have been eliminated. Anytime a terrorist evil is written from the world, this is a very good thing. There are people asking, is it is it, uh, proper to celebrate the death of any human being, even a terrorist. So we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Let's check out the news report first. Take a look at uh, the actual confirmation in this clip, and then we can talk about the ins and outs of the ethics of mourning for a terrorist, if there is any. What do you think? Let's take a look. The Hezbollah terror group now confirming its longtime leader, Hassan Nasrallah, is dead. Nasrallah, also one of the terrorist organization's founders, killed in a targeted Israeli strike in Lebanon that happened just yesterday. The Israeli military saying Nasrallah was with Hezbollah leadership at the organization's headquarters when that precision strike was carried out. Hezbollah now put out a statement saying Nasrallah, quote, has joined his fellow martyrs, but also vowing to, quote, continue the holy war against the enemy and in support of Palestine. We also heard from Iran's supreme leader urging Muslims via social media today to rise up against Israel. A lot to discuss right now, so I do want to bring in a guest. We do have Major Jerome Spielman, a spokesperson for the Israel Defense Forces, joining us live to discuss the strike and, of course, the aftermath. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us here and discuss all of this. Thank you for having me, Josh. Of course. Well, first off, can you break down what you're able to tell me about that precision strike that took place in Lebanon? Sure. Uh, late yesterday evening, the IDF sent a, a fighter squadron towards Dachia. Dachia is a word that most people have learned over the last week. It is essentially a residential neighborhood uh, just outside of Beirut kind of the southern area of Beirut, where Hezbollah leadership have essentially been hiding inside of bunkers and planning attacks on Israelis and on American civilians over the last 30 years. And um, and essentially what we have here is the IDF uh, fighter jets struck those command and control centers. You had Hezbollah in that area uh, and it was confirmed just a few minutes ago by Hezbollah that in fact, Hassan Nasrallah, the architect of evil, who's led that organization, who was really uh, brought up in that organization, who has the blood of countless Israelis and Americans, again, pre 9 11, Josh, Hezbollah had claimed more American lives than any other terror organization, and he was eliminated in that strike. We do know that that is the word, of course, from the IDF. We've also heard it from Hezbollah. Is there any concern based on the situation here that unfolded? I know there's probably a lot of undercover classified information, but is there any question as to whether Nasrallah might actually be alive or is it 100 percent he is dead? Well, you know, it, there was confirmation on the Israeli side. And then as soon as Hezbollah reconfirmed that information, it's, uh, you know, I think it's, we can, we can take it as close to 100%. It's not in Hezbollah's interest to admit that their, you know, arch archetype of evil has been killed. Um, it, you could hear the comments you said earlier from Iran causing, you know, Iranians to rise up against Israelis. But, you know, what's very, very um, upsetting about this it continues to strike just behind me in the air behind me not that long ago. There was an interception. So, you know, we have dealt Hezbollah a major, major blow to their command and control leadership to their weapon silos. But they are really dedicated to evil, dedicated to the destruction of the state of Israel and Western values. And uh, we know that we still have a long road ahead of us, Josh. Will the offensive there still continue over in Beirut and Lebanon? Because, again, we do have Nasrallah eliminated. But is there more to to do there? There is. And, you know, as we've said, any barrel gun, cannon, rocket, missile or suicide drone that is pointed at Israel 
is an imminent threat to the state of Israel, is a valid target, is the target we want to eliminate. You know, we really are here for one simple reason, Josh, is to protect the citizens and civilians, the men and women of the state of Israel that live on the northern border, that have left their homes. The state of Israel has been terrorized by Hezbollah for 12 months now, and we've showed an enormous amount of patience. We've warned the Lebanese people, which we have no war with, but that they need to try to rein in Hezbollah, Hezbollah directly, and the world. That, of course, like any normal country, we can't allow our civilians to be forced out of their homes. And sadly, as, as you and I, many of your viewers know, Hezbollah is so cowardly that they hide beneath their own civilians, which is just truly despicable. So if the, the world uh, should be you know, celebrating today that one last truly evil guy is gone, but at the same time, be very concerned that Hezbollah is still alive and well and needs to be dealt with. And that was going to be my next question here, because we know that after Nasrallah was uh, believed to be dead after that strike, there were still dozens upon dozens of rockets that were fired at northern Israel. So my question, is there a chance that that does die down now that Hezbollah's leader is gone? Or do you expect that it is kind of going to continue as is? Well, you know, Hezbollah is completely disoriented right now. And uh I would say their command and control structure has been eliminated, and therefore uh, they've been dealt a major blow. It's a it's a historical day again for Israel having dealt them such a blow. But you know they've been working for over 20 years, Josh, and investing every dollar that they've received not towards their citizens, but to hiding missiles and rockets inside of homes. And it doesn't take more than three Hezbollah terrorists to go inside a home, and you know from a living room pull back a bl you know, the blinds and just shoot rockets at Israel. And so while the structure and command and control have been dealt a major blow and it certainly weakened their abilities, we're not conning our chickens before they hatch. There's still uh, an ability there. There's over 50,000 Hezbollah terrorists that have been trained. There's over, you know, 150,000 weapons that they have had. And even if we've eliminated, you know, major percentages, they're still there. And so, like I said, uh, the hard days are ahead of us, but we're committed because we're here really to, just to protect the citizens of Israel. No one woke up in Israel the day before Hezbollah attacked us and said, let's go fight Hezbollah. It was never in the cards. We didn't want it. We just want to live here peacefully, but we'll do it what it takes so we can live here peacefully, Josh. And and that, that that's exactly the that's exactly the idea is that it, this is whole thing is in order to live peacefully. So when each person, when each terrorist is eliminated, that is what is being facilitated, not only for Israel but for the embetterments of the world. Uh, President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris al already have praised uh, Israel's efforts in eradicating this evil from the world. As far as the ethics are concerned from a biblical or Torah mindset, so there's kind of contradictory teachings, seemingly contradictory teachings uh, in our tradition. So on the one hand, you have Proverbs 11.10, which says when the wicked perish, there is joy, seemingly that there, that's, a, that's a very good thing. On the other hand, in Proverbs 24, um, uh, verse 17 and 18, it says when your enemy falls, do not rejoice. So what, what, what is it? Is it a very happy occasion or is it a not so happy occasion? Do not rejoice, telling us. The Talmud has a very similar perspective as well. It says it celebrates on the one hand when, wicked, when the wicked perish. On the other hand, the angels are chastised by God in the Talmud for celebrating when the Egyptians are uh, killed in the, in the Red Sea when they're chasing after the Jews. And the angels rejoice when the, when the Egyptians are are annihilated, the angels rejoice and God chastises them for doing so. So on the one hand, we have celebration of the wicked being eliminated. On the other hand, we have condemnation or, or, or hesitation in rejoicing. And so that, that, that balance is something that is extraordinarily human and something that we all, something obviously that we all possess, this kind of, uh, our, should we rejoice even an evil person? Uh, being so, the, the, the answer I, I think is as follows, and I'd love to hear your answer in the comments below. My answer is like this, and it's 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 that balance. On the one hand, we are extremely happy that such an evil force has been eradicated from the world, and the world is a better and safer place because of that. On the other hand, we are saddened that such a life was lived by this human being, that God breathed the breath of life into this person for a good purpose, to utilize it for good in the world, and instead they spent it 
uh, consumes in hatred and terror. So it's sad on, on them as a human being, but we rejoice in the fact that the world is a better place and that these people are no longer uh, a part of the world. Okay, so um, we'll hold here for today. Uh, I look forward to uh, more news of evil being eradicated from the world, and uh, I look forward to talking to everyone soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button below, and uh, we'll see you shortly. Take care.